Welcome to the first edition of the Brevard Council Recap. This new tool will summarize, both in text and video form, the results of the Brevard City Council's recent meetings. The Brevard City Council met Monday, February 20th to discuss the City's Comprehensive Land Use Plan, or CLUP. Jake Petrosky, a project manager with the Stewart Inc. Consulting Firm, presented on the most recent draft of the CLUP. Petrosky noted that the CLUP is a policy tool intended to guide decision-making on development design, rezoning, and infrastructure investments. While the plan helps lay the groundwork for future regulations, it is not itself a regulatory change. Petrosky reviewed community surveys from 2020 and 2022, as well as input from public meetings held in 2022, and identified the public's number one priority goal as a desire to balance growth and new housing with the preservation of the character of Brevard and its neighborhoods. Accordingly, the plan overview organized these recommendations into four categories, land use and housing, active transportation and community health, parks, natural and cultural resources, and economic development, infrastructure, and resiliency. Petrosky then displayed the steep slopes and floodplains map to give everyone an idea of what areas of land in Brevard are developable. The Plants Housing Toolkit addresses the missing middle housing in Brevard, the need to create housing options between single-family homes on large lots and big apartment complexes. These housing options might include dwellings like townhomes, duplexes, and triplexes. The Housing Toolkit also takes up considerations of how to provide support for the preservation of existing affordable housing, what Petrosky referred to as the maintenance of affordability, while stabilizing and preserving the character of Brevard's neighborhoods. If passed, the plan will direct staff to continue work on revisions to the city's unified development ordinance to ease the process of new housing development while preserving neighborhood character. City staff will also continue to work on new tools and financing mechanisms currently under deliberation in the city's housing committee designed to support housing. The plan's key recommendations regarding active transportation and community health include enhanced bicycle and pedestrian safety, street connections, pedestrian wayfinding, and the advancement of greenway priorities. When considering how best to link land use with the transportation, Petrosky says, the plan also considers options for right-sized parking requirements and a potential park once approach to downtown and other activity centers. The CLUP also takes natural spaces and cultural resources into account in considering future development. In particular, Petrosky emphasized conservation designs that prioritize new, low-density development. He also noted plans to expand parks and outdoor recreation opportunities while protecting and rehabilitating sensitive lands and biodiversity. Additionally, the plan includes proposals to support arts and culture in Brevard by encouraging year-round programming. With an eye toward maintaining resiliency and a strong financial position, the plan seeks to diversify the city's economic base. Correspondingly, infrastructure recommendations include continued water and sewer upgrades, stormwater management, and street and sidewalk maintenance. Adequate and well-maintained infrastructure are the foundation of economic competitiveness. Downtown Brevard, Petrosky explained, is key to many goals of the land use plan insofar as it can accommodate growth, improve livability, and contribute to the financial success of the city. Petrosky reviewed parking requirements and height allowances for development in the downtown area while underscoring the need to improve walkability. The City Council will have the opportunity to adopt the plan in March. At the conclusion of Petrosky's presentation, two community members addressed Council during the statutorily required public hearing. Rodney Locks and Prentice Singleton reflected on the tight-knit, full-time residential community that exists among Rice Street, Johnson Street, and East Jordan Street. The good things about Rivard are exemplified in this community, said Singleton, who went on to explain that the residents of that neighborhood do not want to see the characteristics of their community altered by downtown expansion. In other business, Council held a public hearing on a proposal to remove Recreation Advisory Committee from the City's Code of Ordinance. This function is now performed by the Parks, Trails, and Recreation Advisory Committee. Council also approved minutes for recent Public Works Committee and Housing Committee meetings. Council received information on monthly tax collections, tax refunds, and building permit activity, and Council also directed staff to investigate the sufficiency of a request to annex property at 31 York Circle. Upon moving to closing remarks, Council members thanked the Planning Department for their dedicated work on the CLUP. Council member Maurice Jones continued his Black History Month segment by highlighting the work of Joan Bell, who began serving on the Brevard City Council in the early 1990s. City Manager Wilson Hooper announced the reposting of bids for the Streetscape project, and Mayor Maureen Copeloth noted the following upcoming events. The HBCU experience at the Mary C. Jenkins Center on Friday, February 24th at 5.30, an opportunity to volunteer for a community cleanup at the dog park on Saturday, March 11th at 9 a.m., and a Blue Zone certification community celebration 
on March 18th from 4 to 7 p.m. at the depot. The mayor concluded by expressing her disappointment with the Transylvania County Board of Commissioners' refusal to vote on a resolution of support for a federal raise grant for the Acousta Trail.